In this video, let us learn how to create multiple reducers in our JavaScript application. In the last video, we understood the requirement. The shop now needs to sell both cakes and ice creams. And the decision was to have two shopkeepers, one each for managing cakes and ice creams. When it comes to code, the shopkeeper is nothing but the reducer. When we talk about having two shopkeepers, it translates to having two reducers in our code. If we quickly take a look at the code we have so far, we can see that we have one reducer. The default value for the state parameter is the initial state and the reducer also accepts an action. Based on the two parameters, the new state which is the updated number of cakes is returned. Now what is required is to implement another reducer that does pretty much the same. Before we implement that though, I also want to show how to work with a single reducer. First, let's define two actions and action creators to order and restock ice creams. Const Ice cream ordered is going to be equal to the same and const ice cream restocked is going to be equal to the same string. Next for the action creators function order ice cream parameter quantity is equal to 1 as the default value and we return an action with type ice cream ordered and payload set to quantity. Similarly, function restock ice cream one parameter quantity with a default value of one and we return an action with type set to ice cream underscore restocked and payload set to quantity. Next, on the initial state object, I'm going to add another property, number of ice creams and set it to 20. In the reducer, I will add two more switch cases. I'm going to copy the two existing cases and make the modifications. This is going to be case ice cream ordered where we spread the existing state and update number of ice creams. So when an ice cream is ordered, we decrement the number of ice creams by one. And when an ice cream is restocked, we increment the number of ice creams by one. If you pass a payload, the number of ice creams will be incremented by the same amount. Finally, let's dispatch actions to order and restock ice creams. Bind the action creators. And invoke actions.order ice cream twice and then actions.restock ice cream passing in a value of 2. Let's save this and test it out. In the terminal, I'm going to run the command node index. And you can see the log statements. When we order or restock cakes, only the number of cakes is different. 10, 9, 8, 7 and we stocked back to 10. The number of ice cream remains the same at 20. And when we order or restock ice creams, only the number of ice creams change, 19, 18, 20, and the number of cakes remain the same, 10 all the way. Now this approach of using just one reducer function definitely works. But in the long run, when the shop has several products to sell, it just becomes this one huge function 
that would be difficult to debug, manage and keep track of. So now let me show you the other approach of using multiple red users. What we are going to do is basically split our state and the red user. Ideally, you could have one state object with two separate properties for cake and ice cream, but I am going to create two separate ones. So comment out the initial state and instead add const initial cake state is equal to an object with one property number of cakes set to 10 and similarly const initial ice cream state is equal to an object with one property number of ice creams set to 20. Similarly we are going to split our reducer into two. I will copy the existing reducer, paste it and make the necessary changes. The first reducer, I'm going to call it cake reducer and the default value for state is initial cake state. Action remains the same. For the switch cases, all we have to do is remove the ice cream cases. Similarly, for the second reducer, I'm going to call this ice cream reducer. The default value for state is going to be initial ice cream state. Action remains the same and we remove the cake related cases. You can see that our reducer functions are much simpler now. The cake reducer is only bothered about the cake state and the logic to update the cake state. It has nothing to do with ice creams. Similarly, the ice cream reducer is only bothered about the ice cream state and the logic to update the ice cream state. It has nothing to do with the cakes. Each reducer cannot update the other reducer state even if it wanted to since we are passing in only the necessary part of the application state initial cake state or initial ice cream state. Now everything is going so well, but when we take a look at our create store method, you can see there is a problem. The create store method can accept only one reducer. How do we let Redux know about both our reducers? Well, let's take a look at that in the next video.